Hey, what's going on guys? Mike from The Retro Lectures. And today we're gonna to do a tier list of Capcom's greatest published games on the Sega Dreamcast. With 23 titles ranging from shooters to shoot 'em ups the Capcom released amazing titles on the Sega Dreamcast during that period of time. So today, let's rate them. Disclaimer, this is totally my list of my favorite games and where I put them in a ranking from S to E. So let's get started with Cannon Spike. Cannon Spike's an isometrical 3D top-down shooter where you can control one of five characters ranging from Arthur of the Ghouls and Ghosts franchise, to Cammy and Charlie from Street Fighter, to even Mega Man as a secret character. Cannon Spike's overall difficulty isn't too hard. You can probably clear it in one sitting with many continues. I verily enjoy this game and I'm gonna give it an S. Next up, one of my favorite fighters on the console and that's Capcom vs SNK. Capcom vs SNK introduces a mechanic which allows you to build a team of up to four characters based on their strengths as an overall character. So for example, Ken and Ryu are a rating of two, and you can have both of them on your team as long as the point totals do not surpass four. Or you can have four number one characters like Kami, Dalsum, Blanca, and a few other SNK characters and create a team of four. Or you can even go a rating three character like Bison or Saget, and you can have Kami or any other number one character in that tier list. The textures and the 2D environments in the back just look unbelievable and in between every fight there's a little bit of a cut scene that happens so for example a car will get into an accident and when you jump into the game you're going to see that car accident in behind as you're fighting so i'm going to rate this one another s this is an unbelievable fighter for the dreamcast next we'll take a look at Dino Crisis. Dino Crisis is a 3D horror game that many Resident Evil fans are familiar with, but instead of zombies and monsters, you're facing off against dinosaurs. Although not beloved by many fans, I tend to enjoy it. I'm gonna give this one a B. The Sega Dreamcast had plenty of shooters on the console, and one of the best franchises on the console is Gigawing. With plenty of continues and jaw-dropping visuals, Gigawing puts the name of Bullet Hell to test. Along with many other shooters on the Dreamcast, this is one of my favorite ones. I've cleared this on multiple continues, but I found it the most enjoyable because it's not overall difficult. I'm gonna give this one an A. Now onto the second one in the franchise. We're gonna look at Gigawing 2. Gigawing 2 allows four players simultaneous and it's a little bit more difficult in my opinion than Giga Wing 1. I still enjoy it, but I find Giga Wing 1 was a little bit more to my style of gameplay where I'm not too great at shooters. My Twitch controls aren't that amazing. So I'm gonna give this one, although as difficult as the time I had on it, I'm gonna give it an S either way. Gunbird 2. Another shooter on the Dreamcast, Gunbird 2 allows you to play as Darkstalkers fans, most beloved character, Morgan. I fairly enjoy this game. It's overall simplistic. It's not too difficult. Various colors, schemes going all over the place and bright flashes. Really, really deep and very fun game. I'm gonna give this one an A. Now we get into a 3D fighter. Not one of my favorites on the console. That's Heavy Metal Geo Matrix. I didn't enjoy this game. I finished this a few months back. The music is fantastic. It has, you know, amazing bands like Megadeth and Dust to Dust, but the overall gameplay I didn't enjoy. I found I had a heavy difficulty spike later on and I just didn't overall enjoy it. It's not a terrible game, but not in my favorite. I'm gonna give this one a C. Next, we're gonna take a look at a 2D fighter that has an anime following and that's Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. You take control of characters from the anime series, but you also have their inner personas that you're allowed to call at any point in time. It has its signature Capcom Street Fighter style of gameplay where button combos create a super on screen. Jojo's Bizarre Adventure is a fun little game. Not my favorite fighter on the console. I'm gonna give this one an A. Back onto the Capcom shooters. Mars Matrix. This is one of my favorite shooters on the console. It's overall deep and the replayability in it is really, really fun. When you first start playing, you may not be able to get past the first level, but as you keep on playing that first level over and over and over again, you unlock different weapon upgrades or different abilities to add to your ship or different continues that you can add. And the more and more you play, the deeper and deeper into the game you get. There's so many unlocks in this game that to finally get the final unlock would take at least 400 hours. And I know somebody personally who actually got the final ship in this game and spent at least 400 hours trying to get it. I'm looking at you, Dreamcast Hub. I'm gonna give this one an S. It's an unbelievable shooter and 
it's for the price, you can see why. Now we're on to a franchise that introduced a crossover unlike anything we've ever seen before, and that's Marvel vs. Capcom. Its gameplay is second to none, unless you play the second version. It's overall fun, and the team-ups that you could put together are so good. You can have from Marvel characters to Street Fighter characters and everything in between. It's just a, such a great game and deep as far as gameplay goes. You're never going to get bored when playing this game. You have so many characters to choose from, and I'm going to give this one an S. Next, we're going to take a look at its big brother, and that's Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Arguably one of the best fighters on the console. This game goes down as one of the greatest games ever in EVO Championship. Its overall gameplay borrows a lot from Marvel vs. Capcom 1, but it ups it just so much that it makes it even better. So I'm gonna give this one the ranking of SS. Now we look at a 3D fighter that I actually really did enjoy playing, and that's Plasma Sword. At 60 frames a second and fighting as each character, you can actually see and feel the frames and be able to pull off combos that you wouldn't think that you would be able to do. This is such a fun game and the screen devastating super combos that happen while you button mash are just unbelievable. Such a great game. I'm gonna give this one an A. One of the best 3D Smash Brothers style game on the Dreamcast. Power Stone. This is by far one of my favorite 3D fighters. I, I don't even enjoy Smash as much as I enjoy this game. Being able to collect the three diamonds or three jewels and transform into an alter ego and just destroy your enemy by just throwing just about everything at him. The gameplay is just does not get dull. There's so much fun to have in this game and I'm gonna give this one an SS. Typically a sequel to any game on the Sega Dreamcast is a little bit of a better game, but I didn't find that on Power Stone 2. I found that it was trying to do a little bit too much like Smash Brothers, where your environment changes and it doesn't necessarily need to change and you're just pulled away from the gameplay. You're not in tight and witnessing actual combos being pulled off. You're just being pulled away and the, the map changes and I didn't enjoy that at all. I found one to be a whole lot better. I'm gonna give this one a B. Another 3D fighter that's a sequel to another amazing 3D fighter on the PlayStation and rival schools, that's Project Justice. Creating a team of up to three characters, you're able to pull off combos that you're either assisting your characters or you're destroying your enemies. It's a fast style fighter that takes the likes of something like Tekken and it just amps it up a little bit. I'm gonna give this one an S. Arguably one of the greatest horror games of all time, Resident Evil 2 takes that mantle. Resident Evil 2 has seen many ports from the N64 to the GameCube to the Game Boy all the way to the PlayStation 4. And being one of the greatest horror games of all time, I could see why. So Resident Evil 2 gets an S rating automatically. It's just such a great game on the Sega Dreamcast and pretty much on any system that you play it on. Followed up by the ugly stepchild of the Resident Evil family, that's Resident Evil 3. Although we've seen a port on the PlayStation 4 last year, Resident Evil 3 isn't the greatest of Resident Evils. It's fairly short, not too deep, nothing ever done differently than any other Resident Evil before it. I'm gonna give this one a B. Onto the next horror game, and we're gonna look at one of the ugly stepchilds of the Resident Evil franchise, and that's Resident Evil Cold Veronica. And I say Ugly Stepchild just because it hasn't gotten as much love as the other ones as far as ports go. We've seen a port on the PlayStation 2 and I believe that's as far as we've gotten with it. This was one of the reasons why I bought a Dreamcast. Well, I remember seeing this in magazines and following the development of this in the magazine covers and just my mind was blown away by the visuals that we were getting on the Sega Dreamcast. This automatically is one of my favorites in the franchise. I prefer this over two just because I have a lot more fun in this game and I find this just to be a little bit more up my stream. I'm gonna give this one a double S. Next, we're gonna take a look at Spawn in Demon's Hand. It's a 3D brawler that has you controlling Spawn, going through 3D environments and taking down enemies as you go. I unfortunately don't have this game, but I do have the emulator of it, and I rather really enjoy it. It has a weak camera system, but its overall gameplay is pretty fun. I'm gonna give this one a B. Now we're gonna take a look at another 2D fighter from the Street Fighter franchise, and that's 
Street Fighter Alpha 3. With so many Street Fighters on the console, this one gets overlooked by the granddaddy of them all. Not a terrible game at all. It's just overlooked by some of the great fighters that are on the console that Capcom published. Having over 30 characters to choose from, it's just a Street Fighter game, much like any other. I'm gonna give this a B, and not because it deserves it, just because it's not my favorite in the Street Fighter franchise. So a B is fairly fitting where it sits. Next, we're gonna look at a compilation of Street Fighters, and that's Street Fighter Double Impact. Having both New Generation and Double Impact as a compilation on this game, it's just unbelievable. So fun, and you can play any one you want. It's just one of my favorites on the console. I'm gonna give this one an A. And the granddaddy of all fighting games, in my opinion, on the Sega Dreamcast, that's Street Fighter Third Strike. Playing this game, you can honestly feel and see why it was beloved by EVIL champions for years after its release. Its gameplay is so deep, its parry systems unrivaled by any other game, and the gameplay and characters are just unbelievable. Their animations are so good. This game automatically gets an SS as far as fighters go on this console. It's just one of the best fighters on the console, and I can see why just playing this on a regular basis and capturing footage of this is just such a great game. And finally, we take a look at the last 3D fighter on the Sega Dreamcast, Technomancer. A 3D fighter that allows you to take control of mechs and go about fighting in a 3D environment. Its gameplay is similar to like a Tekken, a Soul Calibur style of game where you have one-on-one -on -one battles and the fight style is along those lines where it's more intricate punches and combos that you could pull off. Not like Street Fighter, more like Tekken where you're allowed to pull left-right hooks and roundhouses, being able to use weapons that are specific to certain characters. Its overall gameplay is pretty decent. It's not an overall difficult game until I got to the last boss. For me, I found that I just kept on having to replay it and replay it and replay it until I figured out the pattern and I really enjoyed it. I'm gonna give this one an A. With 23 Capcom published games, you could see why making this list was very difficult and to put them in a tier list was very, very hard. Capcom's support on the Sega Dreamcast was second to none. And you can see through its games, it's unrivaled by any other game manufacturer on the console. Please let me know what your favorite game on the tier list is. If I missed one that you think it should have been gone up or gone down, please let me know in the comments down below. Please like, comment, subscribe. Thanks guys.